Hi, I'm Nessie Ruiz and I'm going to show you how to set up your brand new Chromebook. I'm making this tutorial for Tech Goes Home. Tech Goes Home empowers communities to access and use digital tools to overcome barriers and advance lives by providing access to digital skills training, hardware, and affordable internet access. Check them out at www.techgoeshome.org. Okay, so once you get it out of the box, you want to make sure you have the laptop itself and your power cord. So you want to plug this in before you start. The Chromebook may come with a little bit of a charge, but you definitely want to charge it up um, just, just in case you don't want it to run out of batteries. But uh, find the port. So this one happens to have a couple of ports on the side. Um, port here as well. So yours may not be exactly the same, but just make sure you find the right port <laughs> for your charger and plug that in. Then you're ready to get started. So when you open it up, you're going to find the power button. On this particular model, it's at the top right hand corner. It's the little power sign, so you're going to click on that first and let it boot up. Okay, it's going to boot up and then it's going to come to the welcome screen. Once you're at the welcome screen, you can pick a language here if you'd like to change it. So you just click on there and pick a language from the drop down. I'm going to stick to English. Press OK. There's also some accessibility options. So if you click on that, you can kind of read through here and see if there's anything you might need to help you see or, or hear better. If there's something that applies to you, just click on the little button until it turns blue and you can turn it off by clicking on it again. Okay. When you're ready to get started, press let's go. You're going to pick a Wi-Fi network. So if you have your own Wi-Fi, you should have your password handy. If you're at a local Wi-Fi, then just get the password and the Wi-Fi name from them. So I'm going to go ahead and sign into my own. I'm going to select the Wi-Fi and then put in my code. Press connect and it'll connect to your Wi-Fi. Once it says connected, then go ahead and press next. So these are the Google Chrome OS terms. You can go ahead and read that. And when you're done reading it, you can re do the bottom here. So it's optional. Help make Chrome OS better by automatically sending diagnostic and usage data to Google. I'm okay with that, but if you want to turn it off, click on the button. Gray means off. If you want to leave it on, click it again. Press accept and continue. Once you get to this screen, you can put in your Gmail address. So that's either a personal Gmail address that you have that's like something something at gmail.com or if you have a work or school email that might have a different ending but is serviced through Gmail, you can put that in as well. If you don't have a Gmail address at this point, you can go to more options and click create account and it'll lead you through the process of creating an account um, and then bring you back to the sign in. I'm going to go ahead and put in my email address. And then press next. Put in my password. You would put in your password. <laughs> press next. So this is letting you know that Google Sync will sync up your devices. So whether you have a cell phone or a tablet or another Chromebook, your Chrome settings will be synced across all of your devices. When you're done there, press accept and continue. 
you use Google Play apps and services, Google Play is uh, like the app store that you can use to download apps. So this is the agreement for it. So you can read that. Make sure you have your correct language picked here. So again, I'm going to stick to English, but if you have a different language you prefer, go ahead and select that. Down here in the options, it's going to ask if you want to use Google Drive to back up your files. I suggest you do. Chromebooks don't have a whole lot of space, so it's good to just have them backed up automatically to the Google Drive. Then they're also available for you on a different device, or if you get a new Chromebook, say your Chromebook crashes or breaks or you drop it, and you need to get a new one, and if you've backed up everything, then when you open a new Chromebook, all your stuff will be there. So I would leave that checked on. When you're done, go over to the More button and click on it. And then you'll see Use Location, so it'll just like know where you are and um, give you settings and options based on your location. It's okay if you want to turn it on or leave it off. And press Accept. This will ask if you want to activate Google Assistant. You can always activate it later. I'm going to click No Thanks. Because my phone and my Chromebook are both hooked up to my Wi-Fi, it knows that I have a phone. I'm going to skip that for right now, but feel free to press Accept and Continue and go through the setup process if you like. And here we are. Welcome to your new Chromebook. You can take a tour. I would recommend you do that. It'll walk you through some settings and things like that. When you're done, you can press X to close out of it. Okay, let's take a look at your new Chromebook. So here's your beautiful desktop. At the bottom, you're going to see a bar um, with some apps. Some of them will be defaulted uh, pinned. So that just means that when they're pinned, that means they show up there, but you can change that. If you come over to the left, you're going to see this little circle. It's called the launcher. If you click on that, it's going to open a little bit. Um, you can type into the search bar here. This will find things on your computer and also on Google. And uh, if you press on this arrow here, it's going to open up to show you the entire menu. This list down here is your recently used apps. So I'm going to click on the arrow. It's going to show me all of my apps, everything that I've downloaded. This is mostly the stuff that comes with it. If you click on the right hand side here on these dots, the they're like different pages. So if you see, if I click on the bottom one, it's going to show me another page of apps. So you can kind of toggle back and forth between all your apps. And from here, you can open up anything you like. So for example, if I want to open up Chrome, I can double click here and it'll open Chrome for me. I can also pin things to the menu like I told you. So for example, let's say that I want my files pinned to the menu. I can tap with two fingers on the mouse. That's going to be like a left click. You can also press Alt and do a regular click and that is that will show you your left click menu. So you can pin to shelf. That's going to pin it down at the bottom. I like to have my files there. And you can close this by clicking on the launcher again. Another really important part is on the right here. You're going to see your time, your battery level, whether your Wi-Fi is on or not. And also this number indicates whether you have a notification. If you click on that, you'll see your notifications off the top if you have any. The one thing you'll notice is that there's a little arrow at the top right. When you click on this, it's going to collapse it and just make the screen a little bit smaller. So you can always expand it and make it smaller as well. You'll see your picture. You'll see the sign out button to sort of uh, sign out just the user. It'll keep the computer on. And then here's your power button so you can shut down the computer. Here's your lock. That'll just lock the screen. So it won't exactly sign you out, but you have to put your password to open it up again. And here are your settings. When you go into this settings gear, it's going to have a lot of detailed settings. In the meantime, you have some quick access to some of your settings here as well. So we'll go over those and then go into the more detailed settings. So down at the bottom, you'll see your battery amount. I'm at 53% and I've got 44 minutes until it's charged up all the way. Also tells me the date and the time. 
here are my slider settings for my audio and my screen so I can make it a little bit brighter if I like or darker my sound here's the night light if you click on it it basically makes it a little bit dimmer and a little bit more yellow so that's something you can use at night so that your uh, blue light from your computer screen doesn't keep you up at night I'm gonna turn that off for right now here are your notifications so you can uh, turn them on or off here. This is actually all your notifications are on for all apps. I like to turn them off because they kind of drive me crazy. So if you click on that, it turns on the do not disturb. If you want to be a little more specific about which apps are allowed to contact you, you can click into this. So this top button here is basically your on or off switch for all your notifications. However, if you want to get some notifications but not all, you can check which apps have permission to notify you and which don't. So I could basically like click off the ones I don't want to contact me. Like I said, I like to keep everything on don't disturb. And then you can press the back button. Here are your options for accessibility. If you click into that, you can turn things on or off. So you can see I have my large mouse cursor activated. I can click on that and turn it off. Click on it and turn it back on. When you come out of there, then you can also see your Bluetooth. You can turn your Bluetooth on and off right here. Right now it's searching for devices. And you can turn it back off. I tend to leave it off when I'm not using it so it doesn't use battery because it'll just sort of keep scanning. And then you have your Wi-Fi here as well, which you can turn on and off as well. So here's off and here's on. Now it's going to look for it. And you can click into here to see some options. So it'll show you all the different Wi-Fi networks as well. These are sort of like shortcuts to some of your settings. If you want to go and look at all your settings and all the details, and you want to click on this little gear icon right here. So I'm going to click on that now. And we're not going to go through every single setting, but I'm going to show you some of the important ones. So here's your Wi-Fi again, as I said. So if you want to connect to a different Wi-Fi and it's not showing up, you can click on this little arrow right here. And it'll show you all of the Wi-Fi's that are in range. So you can always click into one. So if I want to change into this one, I can click on it and put in the password. And connect to that one. So it'll switch me. You can see it says connecting there and connected. So you can always switch up your Wi-Fi there. Here's your Bluetooth again. So if I want to turn this on, I can just turn it on right here. If you want to find a device to connect to it, I would press on this arrow. And right now it says it's not finding any devices. Let me turn on my headphones for you. Okay, so I'm going to turn on my headphones. Oh, I found the TV. It's not my TV. <laughs> okay, so there are my headphones down here. So I turned it on at the same time. And then you can click on that. And it'll ask if you want to... Oh, it's already connecting it. So it says connecting and then press OK. And now my headphones are connected via Bluetooth. So it's pretty easy. When you're done pairing, you can come back out again. Those are already paired now, so you can just turn on and off. I'm going to turn it off for now. If you have a phone and it's on your Wi-Fi, it can find it, an Android phone. So you can go into Setup. Here's my phone. It knows I have a Galaxy S10. That's because my phone is hooked up to the same Wi-Fi as my computer. And so it knows that it's there. So I'm not going to set it up, but if you want to set up your phone, you can press Accept and Continue and go through the settings. I'm going to press Cancel for now. Here you can manage your users and set up your parental controls as well. So I'm not going to do it now, but if you want to sort of control the screen time or where your kids go, you can go to setup. And that'll lead you through the process as well. So just press get started and follow those instructions. Down here are some other options. Uh, so your touchpad, your keyboard, your displays, your storage management, and your power. So this will give you some settings of how you want to use your keyboard. If you don't really know, then I would just leave it as the default, but you're welcome to come in here and play with it. You, you won't ruin it by playing with this section. 
And your keyboard, you'll also see ways that you can customize that as well if you want to. For displays, this is pretty helpful because you can change the size of the display. So for example, if this is a little bit hard to read for me, I can make it bigger. So I can just sort of keep clicking on these until I find one that works for me. That's really nice and big. Let's see how big it goes. That's pretty big too. So you can sort of play with this and make it work for you. And here's your nightlight. So you can turn it on anytime you want. You can see it makes it nice and yellow so it doesn't keep you up with the blue light. You can also change the color of it so you can make it a little bit cooler which is bluer or a little bit warmer, which is more orangey. So you can sort of customize that. I'm gonna turn that off for right now. The other thing you can do is schedule it. So you can have it never turn on so that you just do it manually when you want it, or you can have it set to do it at a certain time. So you can do like sunset to sunrise. So in the evening, it'll automatically turn on, or you can do a custom setting for different times. When you're done with that, you can come out storage management so as you can see this chromebook only has about six and a half gigs of storage doesn't have a lot so you definitely want to not save too much to your chromebook your google account and your drive will have about 15 gigs for free so you definitely want to rely on that a lot but this will sort of tell you what you're using your storage for and when you're done you can click back okay and your power settings so under power uh, to just tell you what percentage you're at, how much time is left, what to do when you're not using the computer, when it's idle, it's set to go to sleep. You can also have it turn off the display, but stay awake and keep, keep the display on. I like to let it go to sleep. Also, um, this is the default setting is to let it go to sleep when you close the cover. So I like to keep that on, but you can change these settings if you like. To personalize your Chromebook, you can change your image. So right here, you can pick any of these little guys if you want, or you can upload your own picture. If you click on this uh, take photo, it'll take a picture with your webcam, or you can add a picture from, from your file. I'm gonna leave that one for now. The other thing you can do is change your wallpaper. So if you click here, it's gonna open this little app. Here's my picture that I have right now. And you can sort of just scroll through here, see if you like anything. I tend to like really pretty things like this. So you can pick something and just take a look at it and see if you like it. I like it. So you can leave that and just press X when you're done picking what you like. And you can reset your wallpaper anytime you like. Then uh, search engine, we're gonna leave that defaulted to Google because they're the best of course. To manage your apps, you can go into here. I just have the default apps right here, but if you wanted to delete anything or uninstall it, um, then you can click on it and click the uninstall tab right here. And then you'll see it'll ask if you wanna remove it. So you can remove it. You can always reinstall an app if you need it again. And I wouldn't mess with this Linux thing unless you know what you're doing. So we're gonna go into the advanced settings this is an area you might want to be just a little bit more cautious of. Don't play with it if you don't understand what the settings are, but I will show it to you. So if I click on advanced, this will open it up. So here's the time zone. So usually things are set to update automatically. So hopefully you have the right date and time on your computer. If you don't, you can set it here, go to choose from list and check where you are. I am in Eastern daylight time, so I'm going to leave it right there. But if you have a problem, it doesn't quite sync, it doesn't know where you are, you can come in here and change it. You can turn a 24 hour clock on instead. And here are some options you can turn on and off. Um, so help improve Chrome's features and performance, you can turn that on and off in these other uh, settings as well. Keep Wi-Fi on during sleep. Uh, it, it's really up to you, I'm gonna turn it off. I just feel like it uses battery. If you want to change your language, so maybe you speak something besides English, you can do that here as well. And you can add multiple languages, which is really helpful. I'm going to add Spanish. I'm Colombian, so we'll go with that. And when you're done, just click right back out. 
Here is uh, in case you want to disconnect your Google Drive from the computer. Again, I don't recommend it, but you can if you want to. Here you can install printers. Here are your accessibility options. So you might want to go in and just take a look because there's actually some stuff that's really helpful in here. So there's text to speech, there's display options, including increasing the contrast and adding a magnifier. That can be helpful. Some keyboard and text input options and mouse and touchpad. As I said, I really like the big mouse. You can turn it on or off and actually you can change the size as well. So you can really kind of customize it. So feel free to go through this and see if there's anything that might be helpful for you and then click out of it. This last setting here, you wanna be really careful with it because it's to power wash. So when you power wash a Chromebook, it's gonna reset it to factory settings, which means it'll delete any files that you have saved to the computer itself in your file folder. If it's backed up on the drive, it's fine there, but if it's just on the computer and not on the Google Drive, it will get deleted. It'll also remove any users from the computer. So you definitely only wanna do that if you're having a lot of trouble with your Chromebooks, let's say it's really slow, or you got a Chromebook from someone else and you want to sort of clean it out and make it as close to new as possible. So then you want to go through that. I do have a video on how to power wash your Chromebook, so feel free to watch that if you need the help. Okay, so there you go. That's how to use your Chromebook. If you have any questions, type them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them for you. If this video has been helpful, thank me with a thumbs up by pressing the like button. All right, have fun.